What's up, everybody? <clears throat> I don't even know how many viewers I'm going to end up getting in this. It's been quite a while since I've done a stream. Shit, almost a month, a little bit. Everybody. Oh, <clears throat> shit, hold up. I don't even know how many viewers. About a month. I haven't had any videos up in a while either. Shit's just been super fucking crazy for me. And I just wanted to come tell you guys what's going on. See what the hell you guys have been up to. Uh, first and foremost, shit has been fucking nuts in this last month. A little over a month. But... It is what it is. Um, shit, I don't even know where to fucking begin. Uh, Metal Monday. That's you, If you guys are looking to follow me and see what's going on, I'm always on there every Monday. So you can somewhat follow me over there. I got that link in the description. Um, fucking follow me on Facebook. All that good shit. But uh, first thing I'm going to get out of the way is the Red Room thing. I know I, I was promoting it, saying all kinds of shit, what's going on with it, and then kind of just went black in radio silent. Well, <clears throat> that's because I ended up having to give three people that are part of it the boot in the ass, <clears throat> and they're no longer going to be involved with it. I have explained a million and one times how hard it is to get more than one fucking person together in a day. But when you do manage to schedule something and they don't show up, which screws everything for the rest of the day, <clears throat> I'm only going to handle that or deal with that once. And that person had to fucking go. So <clears throat> that kind of held some shit up. Secondly, I had some run-ins with uh, Johnny Law, which kind of fucked me up. And when I finally find, because that tied up <clears throat> finances big time. And when that finally got squared away, I'm going to show you guys this. Hopefully, you can't really make out my address and all that shit. But this just happened to me two about two weeks ago. <clears throat> you ready? There's one fine. There's two fines. Three fines. And the fourth fine. And that's all. It's all one thing, you know, one incident. But uh, the pig that jammed me up decided to really. Give me the long dick of the law on this one. And this is just some fucking bullshit. I'm fighting it, but there's over 800 and some dollars worth of fucking tickets right here. All on some dumb shit. And I really don't see much of it standing at all. But in the meantime, that really screws me up. Because like I said, the first problem I had to solve, finally got straightened away so I can put some money back into production. And then I get hit with this. So, whatever. Second thing I want to talk about, or third, whatever. Check this bad boy out right here. I've been wanting one of these for a while. And I finally got it. It's my new fucking camera rig. I don't know how good you can see it. I moved my camera. So, I'm getting used to the, the whole new angle on the shot. But, yeah, check this bad boy out right here. I fucking love this thing, man. This is going to make things so much easier and better with the new camera to begin with. And now with the rig. I mean, it's set up so you can do some side shots. I'm actually getting... <clears throat> it's a little LCD screen. It's set that you can put it right here. So if you want to do some low... Angle shots like that. You can watch it on your LCD screen. And then you can also do the shoulder mount so that you can, you know, follow them and keep it a little still. 
Yeah, dude, this thing is fucking awesome. The one thing I have to get that's kind of screwing me up right now is uh, I got to get a way, way bigger tripod because the tripod actually, <sighs> it's, you know, put down. But this is the tripod I have. I put this motherfucker on there. It's going to just crush and destroy this. So this is no longer going to do its job. I got to get a serious monster, like, with fucking beastie ass legs to hold this thing up. Because if I had to guess the weight on this, I don't know, probably close to 10 pounds, maybe a little more. I'm not really good at guesstimating weight. But that thing's heavy as shit, and my tripod's definitely not going to hold it up. But, uh, yeah, I managed to get that. <clears throat> I did upgrade my audio software. I didn't get, you know, the software I wanted to get, but I did upgrade. So that's a good thing. Um, there's this app or a website I, that uh, somebody told me about. It's called Let It Go. And you can actually get some fucking cool ass shit on there. Dirt cheap. And we're looking at a boom mic right now. So uh, we're going to snag that up and we're good to go. Uh, we got, I think it's eight. Eight out of 22 scenes we have written out. Oh, fuck. I don't even have it here. It's on my buddies. We actually did, a, uh, you know, drew out the scenes, whatever the fuck you call that, so that you know that you know how we see it in the angles that we want to shoot it in. That's all written out, and uh, the eight scenes we got, they're just simple. I don't want to call them filler scenes, but they're scenes where there's, you know, just quick, simple shots. Uh, as I think I said this in my last stream, the girl that we're using for the makeup, she, of course, you know, once paid, which is understandable. We're actually uh, stashing away so that we can actually give her some money. Because I'll come right out and tell you, the chick, she she wanted, uh, I think it's, I don't read her text, it's 20 or 25 bucks an hour, which ain't shit. Honestly, we, we can probably do what we need to do in two or three hours. But that's one of them situations where, okay, say we do it, we get it done in three hours, it looks amazing, she does fucking awesome. I would honestly feel like a dickhead saying, okay, here's your 75 bucks. You know, because if it's good and looks good and she's awesome, even though that's the deal, 25 bucks an hour, that's really shitty, you know, to hand her 75 bucks and say, Right on, thank you. I would think, you know, they deserve more money than that. I'm sorry. I'm used to my fucking camera being right here. Like, you know, whatever. But that's the other thing. So <clears throat> depending on how long that takes, I'll probably hook her up with a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, that's where Red Room is right now. So we still got a good bit uh, of more intricate shooting type scenes. But uh, the intro and the title scene that I'm working on, I uh, I heard this song and I thought, okay, yeah, that's going to be the perfect intro song, okay? And then what happens is I shoot the intro, opening scene, the way I want it, you know, to look. And now for it, the song just does not match up. And uh, a buddy of mine... I, I don't even know if he's still doing YouTube. I heard some shit. But his name is Jokerfish. He's actually he's actually on one of my streams before. He knows this kid, and he sent him that te that little bum ass teaser trailer I made a few months back. It's on my channel. He sent the kid the uh, he sent it to him, and the kid actually scored it. You know what? Let me see if I can fucking pull this up because it's fucking amazing. Like I'm blown away. On how good it is. So <clears throat> once I get some shit together, I want to send it over to this uh, dude because 
I'm blown away with it. It's phenomenal. I got to see if I can find the email. And hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. But it's so good. Let me see. Fuck it. It was a while ago. I don't even know what the fucking email is. Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Hold on one second. Okay. Here we go. Let's try this. Screen share. Yep. All my porn's X'd out of. Don't worry. There goes my damn camera. Okay. Hold up one second. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it too. Yeah, like now that's pretty simple and everything. <clears throat> but uh I think it's it turned out pretty fucking good. I, I like the sound the kid used and I'm gonna send him scene by scene. Hopefully he's cool and he ain't gonna go sharing it with everybody. But uh, from what I understand, the kid's fairly young, too, which is pretty fucking cool, because even the chick that we're using for our makeup, she's 16 years old. I mean, her dad, <laughs> her dad called me. He was like, hey, uh, I hear you're shooting a short film, and you would like my daughter to do the makeup? And I'm like, uh, my buddy told me about, I, I didn't know she was 16, but yeah, sure. And yep, so that's that for uh, Red Room. It's fucking, it's going, it's going. Uh, we were supposed to have, I'm not going to say he's out yet, but some fairly decent size, well-known heavy metal name dude is supposed to be one of the online bidders. And I really hope he goes through with it because I sent him his dialogue and all that, <clears throat> but he was just on tour. So I understand why he hasn't, got back to me with it yet okay now for josh's metal monday as i said in the beginning i know i've been slacking over here on this channel but uh there's been a ton of shit going on over there man i'm fucking just blown away with you know see i'm at and this is what i don't understand i'm at 1200 subs here and I know this channel, it's more like horror, serial killer, whatever. It's all over the place. But my metal channel, we're at under 200 subs. And the amount of fucking shit and people we get to talk to just blows my mind. I mean, we got I got to do that VIP thing with Super Joint, which was fucking still... I, I'm still bragging about it. I don't give a fuck. Speaking of which, I put together an awesome vlog. Uh, for the whole road trip, footage from meeting up, getting in the car, the drive down there, getting to the show, the VIP. If you want to check that out, that link is in the description. Definitely go check it out. <clears throat> but uh, we actually just got to interview Demolition Man, Tony Dolan from uh, Venom Inc. He was one of the original members of Venom and uh, what was it? Evil Empire. Dude is so fucking cool, man. He, we got part one. It's in the description. We same thing we say to everybody. We wanted to see if he had, you know, half twenty minutes, half hour. We ended up talking to the guy for like an hour and a half. We've talked to a fairly good amount of, you know, 
metal musicians and they're all about their fans so don't you know i'm not discarding or whatever the fuck you call it any of the other people we've talked to but the way this dude talks about the music and his fans it the guy he just blew me away man me and josh both we're sitting there messaging uh back and forth on facebook while we're interviewing a guy <clears throat> just like this guy is fucking so cool like the you gotta go check out the interview like i said part one's in the description if you guys are into that type of music, that I got the link for Josh's Metal Monday in there as well. You gotta check it out. It was by far one of the top three interviews we've done so far. I mean, normally editing, I slack on. I'm like, oh, I don't fucking feel like doing it. I don't feel like doing it. I was actually pumped at it this one just to hear it back. You know not having to sit there and think of my next question because the guy got so in depth and that happens to me uh here and there <clears throat> i'll have a couple questions in my mind and the guy will get in depth and he'll answer like three questions right you know in his first response so i'm like oh fuck. well there goes my next three questions so it was actually cool to sit back and uh you know watch it back because it, w it was just an awesome fucking interview, man. But uh, I don't know what the fuck's up with the chat, man. It's dead as shit. Why ain't nobody chatting? I want to see what you guys are getting into tonight as well. I mean, I haven't came on and done anything in a while. So I want to come bullshit. You know what? Let's get some, you know what, I'm going to see if I can get some guests in here. How about that? Let me see. I'll get some peeps in here. We'll maybe liven this up a little bit. Because this is boring. Nobody wants to talk. Yo, Dems. Oh, hey, what up, man? I was just talking about you a little bit ago, dude. <clears throat> Actually, uh... I don't know if uh, it worked because nobody was chatting, but I played back the video of uh, your boy who did that uh, the scoring, the music for the teaser. So, uh, like I said, nobody was chatting at the time, so I don't know if it worked, but uh, I fucking love that, man. I can't wait to get, I want to get some dramatic ones shot. What the fuck? I want to get send some uh, the more dramatic shots to see what he wants to do with them. Because I ain't going to tell him how to do it. That was awesome. Dude got free reign. I'm going to see if I can get some guests in here. We'll spice this up a little bit. And whoever wants to pop in, just pop the fuck in. You're more than welcome. Oh, shit, where'd that go? Oh, yeah, I let him uh, hook you up. Fucking A, man. <clears throat> I was, dude. Like I said, when I first watched it, I was, uh, I had just woken up. And I'm like, all right, that's the shit. Now, were you in here to see this? What about... Did you see this shit? Look at that bad motherfucker right there. I'm so pumped about this thing, man. The new camera rig. Now I just gotta step up the fucking tripod game. This thing's fucking beastie as all hell. I feel like uh, Quentin Tanner. No, he's the director, but some serious Hollywood type shit. Like, yo, I'm filming here. <laughs> but yeah, man. It's got some uh, extra filters there on the side. Oh, fuck. Uh, so, what a... Oh, shit. You got good mics. Uh, actually, I was saying a little bit ago, there's this fucking website and app. It's called Let It Go. Dude, it is amazing how cheap you can get some stuff on there. And we, we found a boom mic on there. And we're getting it. 
And as soon as we got that, I got it. I didn't get the audio software I wanted because, you know, the moolah situation. Man, look at my fucking receding hairline. Holy shit, man. I got a five head. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a little better, so fuck it. It'll work. But yeah, we got, we're not even halfway there yet. It's like eight, six to eight fucking scenes of 22 done. And they're all, that's including the uh, open scene. So I want to get uh, the first murder scene. That's the one I want to send your boy because there's going to be some blood and gore in it and i want to see what he does with that and like i said when you talk to him tell him i'm not going to be one of i mean if he sends it not you know I, I think it's shit i'm going to say it's shit but i'm not going to be one of them people that are like oh no i want this 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 i look at it this way uh he's the artist you know i'm not going to fuck with the artistic flow What's up, Roland? Holy fuck. Yeah, man, it's been a while, dude. Shit's been crazy. No bullshit. Been working like fucking seven days a week and shit. And I can't seem to get Johnny Law to leave me the fuck alone. Look at this shit. Four fucking citations. And one fucking infraction. But he gets me, hits me with four different fucking charges, man. Oh, God, I hate the fucking pigs around here. But, shit, man, it is what it is. Gotta do what I gotta do. But, fuck it, man. He's cool like that. He can take direction and give him an idea. Dude, I honestly like... I couldn't have put it into words. But the way he did that fucking little teaser... I couldn't have asked for anything better, dude. I'm floored with it, man. It's fucking awesome. You can tell he took his time by sitting there timing it and everything. <clears throat> it was perfect. It actually gave me, like, the very beginning of it, it had, like, a fucking original Halloween fucking vibe to it. And I, I love it, dude. I fucking love it. Tell him I could not be happier. God damn, I got to get new contacts, too, man. These fucking things. Holy shit. Oh, man. And then uh, I know I don't got a bunch of people in it right now, but usually people watch it later. Be sure to go in the link below and check out my Super Joint Road Vlog. I talked about the show on my, my last stream I did, but I actually got the, the footage from the whole trip. You got to go watch it. I appreciate it, Roland, man. You've been here for a while, dude. You've been here for quite a while and I appreciate all the support man but yeah I'm actually proud of that fucking road vlog it's all edited nice and <laughs> and I felt like a little kid on Christmas at that show man like I said it was over a month ago and I'm still fucking talking about it like it just happened three days ago And then I'm pumped. I don't know my heavy metal fans in here. The Vulgar Display of Power 25 year anniversary. I was watching all kinds of clips. And I'm fucking pumped as shit for that, man. All right, what the fuck? Oh, shit. I guess nobody wants to come on. What the fuck? Hold on. I'm going to have to harass some people right quick. Hold on a second. He actually, uh, the one dude messaged me on, uh, see, the YouTube Messenger, which I just seen it because I went to look at my email for that video. And uh, let's see if I can get him on here. I don't want to say his name and all that until he pops on, but this dude's got a pretty cool channel. Big time stoner. Big time fucking stoner. 
Oh, okay. Uh, are you on Facebook right now, Joker? I'll send it to your uh, Facebook. Wait, fuck. Are you still Jokerfish on there? Where the fuck you at, man? Yeah, here, I'll hit you up on Twitter. Yeah, I'll send it to you over Twitter right quick. Beer man, what the fuck is up? Wait, why why can't I fucking DM you? What's going on here? Give me shit. Why can't I fucking direct message you, man? Here, you know what, dude? Message me on Facebook. Send me a message on Facebook, and I'll I'll reply with the uh um with the link because I can't find you. So shoot me a message on Facebook real quick. <clears throat> Writing a new song for my dude, bro, Goose Show. Dude, that was funny as fuck. I popped on for a little bit. <laughs> How did you do that background like that, man? That was pretty cool. It was all tripped out and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing, man? <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. Cause I gotta figure that shit out, man. I mean, I don't know how to do green screen shit, but I'd like to learn how to do that. You, you're definitely a fucking badass video editor, man. Definitely one of the better ones I know that I talk to. Probably actually the best one that I know that I personally talk to. Boom! 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 Wait, is that you? Yeah, there you are. Here. Boom. You're linked. My boy Jokerfish is coming on. This dude's the man. Awesome to talk metal with. Is somebody knocking? What? What? Pardon me, people. What? You little turd, quit it. <laughs> Thinking they fucking need me? It's my kid. He's he's ding dong ditching my office. <laughs> What's up, Dems? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm all right, brother. Except I cracked my head almost open last night, but <laughs> how the fuck did you do that, bro? I have no clue. I I was like half asleep. I got out of bed to take a piss. Next thing I know, my head's bouncing off the floor. I, I don't know what the fuck happened. Laying on the floor like, oh. <laughs> God damn, dude. You got a big head? <laughs> no, I'm, it's all good. It's all good. But I was just like, I was shocked. I'm like, wait. I was just standing there, and now I'm fucking face down on the floor. Jesus. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know if you've seen it, but... uh. You know how a while ago I got all fucking jammed up and had to pay off all kinds of shit? And that was what kind of stopped me doing Red Room for a little bit. Right after I fucking pay it off, I'm all caught up like fucking A. Four fucking tickets, dude. Jeez. Yep. And the fucking piece. Of, I mean, we were getting rid of the car anyway, but now it's gone. 
Oh, uh, but would he hit you with like oh the blinker the fucking? Dude, do you guys have inspections up there? You gotta get your car inspected. Yeah. My girl, yeah. she delivers papers, dude. She slacks on everything. The inspection was up. Uh, and I was uh, my my boss had left town, and he's like, and we're we're working on five houses on the same street. He's like, I'm leaving you in charge. Blah blah blah. Here's the keys. You need to make sure you're up there by eight thirty so the contractors can get in. So I'm like, no problem. And I drive my son to school, so I had to take my kid to school, shoot over, unlock the properties, which luckily it's right up over the hill from here. And then I would bring the car home, so my girl has the car for the day, right? And I would just walk over the hill. It was a fucking sheet of ice, dude. I'm coming down around the bend on the hill, fucking slid. Just the ass end got stuck in a ditch. And I'm like, I got to fucking go. <laughs> so I ran the keys down to the house. I'm like, the car stuck up on the fucking hill in a ditch. Call trip away. You got to get the fucking car out. I left. Go to work. Dude, I'm, talk I'm talking to my buddy on the phone, telling him what happened. Fucking 4.30 comes around. I'm leaving. He calls me. He's like, dude, they're fucking towing the car. I'm like... Are you fucking kidding me? So I get up over there, dude. And, and and this is just my luck. It sat there all day. Okay? As I'm leaving work, they finally decide to come fucking tow it. They see the stickers are bad. Dude, then here, listen to what this fucker's hitting me with. He ain't even getting me for the stickers. The real thing he could have got me for. He ain't even fucking getting me. He's got me for... Improper tires, because the fucking two front tires were kind of bald. That's the one ticket. And it comes to $207. Uh, dr driving at a safe speed. First off, you found the fucking car sitting there. How are you going to hit me with something like that? You probably fight that you one. Probably fight that one. Oh, I'm definitely fucking fighting that one. Failed to not police of account slash dan oh I got not calling the cops because I got stuck in the ditch. Why the fuck would I call you? What are you gonna fucking do? I took the keys to have my girl get it towed pulled out of the ditch. Fuck off. I'm definitely fighting that one too. And then this is the best one. Reckless endangerment or wait, hold on. I think I'm oh shit, I'm missing a fine. I got five, my bad. Oh, shit. This is disregarding traffic lane. How can you get me with shit like this when the car was sitting there? They're going to have to prove it. How can you prove if, you know, they don't have, like, unsafe speed? They don't have, they don't know what happened. There was just a car sitting there. Yeah. And then this one, it's uh, <laughs> leaving the scene of an accident. <laughs> like, I guess oh. they can kind of get me on that one. <laughs> right. But this is insane, dude. It's over fucking 800 and some fucking dollars in fucking fines, man. And he doesn't even fine me for having bad stickers. Like, are you serious? You make <laughs> up this bullshit? Oh. Oh. Fucking pigs, man. And Wait, that's like... That the, was that in Pittsburgh? That? Was that the uh, no. That's the other funny thing, dude. I almost think he was out of his jurisdiction because where it happened i would have thought it would have been the city cops but no it's uh the the borough i live in and it's like no bullshit like where i live dude i could fucking throw a rock out my window and i'm technically city and it's okay. like right there man and he was a complete fucking dick but then what was weird is like right as they're towing it away he starts being cool like we can we can work something out at the magistrate. But when I first walked up, he's fucking chest up, puffed up. Why you're just gonna wreck your car and leave? I'm like, dude, I didn't wreck, dude. I slid off and it's fucking icy and snowy. The ass then stuck. I where where do you see I wrecked? You've never got stuck in the snow before? We're in Pittsburgh for Christ's sake. <laughs> it snows in Pittsburgh, though. <laughs> yeah, dude, we're one of the few fucking cities where we have all four seasons in one fucking day. <laughs> yeah, I was I was only in Pittsburgh once, um, and it was just for like you know, like a half a night just to play, and then we were out. Yeah, it gets fucking crazy here, man. You can drive with no fucking doors down here. Hold on, I'm back. I'm backed up in the chat. Disc Golf said, what's up? 
Dish cough. Good. What's up, JR? <laughs> Roland's going at it with a half gallon of Jim Bean. Going at it with a <laughs> no inspection down here. Yeah, dude, I, I I heard that some cities don't have that fucking shit. We got uh inspection and emissions. It's fucking crazy. And uh say your shit's up in April, they'll give you like I think it's ten days. And then uh, depending on the cop, they can actually fucking tow your shit for your fucking stickers being bad. And it's like, come the fuck on. Dude, I've seen people with a damn near brand new looking fucking car and their inspections up and they'll fucking tell him like like what could possibly be wrong with this car that it's a danger that he's on the fucking road yeah that's just a bureaucratic bullshit that they you know and then and then the city say we don't have any money it's like yeah you just took 800 dollars off me asshole you know I mean, that's definitely why this fucker's in it the borough I, dude actually one of the times i fucking barely because I don't even know why I moved to this borough. My fucking track record with this borough is pretty bad. Like two out of four times I was pulled over, I went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> the, fucking, the one time I didn't go to jail, my buddy went, but I didn't. Dude, I just got paid. And this was back before I had a bank account and all that shit. So I used to have to cash my check at a check cashing place. I had $700 on me. And this motherfucker is like, what are you doing all this? And I'm like, you see that thing wrapped around it, that receipt? That's the check cashing receipt. I just got paid. And then he looks over at his partner. I'm pretty sure the township could use a couple hundred bucks. And I'm looking at him like, I fucking dare you, dude. This will be my first assault on an officer. You fucking try it, <laughs> motherfucker. They're assholes over here, man. Well, you know, it, it's funny because uh, somebody did a test and they said they found like coke. Like they just tested a bunch of $20 bills. And they said, like, they found cocaine on a certain percent of them. So some people would have, like, a lot of money on them. The cop would go, oh, we're going to do a, a drug test on this money. And they'll test a bunch of the 20s, and they get up, and they can seize every fucking dime you have. Say it's, it's drug money. Are you fucking serious? And, yeah. Because um, I saw, it was like cops or one of those shows. These people were coming up from Florida, and they had, like, you know, their life savings with them and then the cops just said nope this is drug money and they, they didn't get arrested for drugs they didn't get they didn't have anything on them wow. and it, it, was, it was like you know and I, I mean i know it was just like cops so who knows like what happened in the end but just the fact that they can do that is fucking sickening see that's what i always try to explain to my fucking dickhead brother dude he'll sit there and say shit like about getting pulled over and all that well technically they can't well here's the deal first off if they do decide to cock you over, you already went to jail. So that part fucking blows. They did fuck you. You went to jail. Second off, it's their word against yours. Nine times out of ten, you're going to fucking lose unless you got some serious fucking proof, man. That's the part that kills me about the fucking pigs, dude. That's why I, I'm all for it. And I, I'm glad DNN Josh works on them and shit. All them fucking pigs having to wear a, a, a camera. That shit needs to be done big time yeah there's there's too much there's too much going on especially with these these small little towns and boroughs and stuff they get away with murder you know though they, they they just like you said you know you can't argue your case on the street with the cops they're going to arrest you anyway yep. so you, you just you, so you got to deal with that and then you got to go to court and deal with the judge being like well I, like well i don't like one time i was in um, I got kicked out of county court. Like I got kicked down to like the local court and the guy's like, well, I, I don't know if there's witness intimidation going on. And the guy's accusing me of fucking like witness intimidation. I'm like, what? I'm like, what am I a fucking crime boss? You know, <laughs> I got into a fight. <laughs> That's fucked, man. See here in Pittsburgh, I think this is probably one of the few cities that you, I mean, I've, ha I've done it where I wanted to wave my shit to downtown <laughs> yeah. i don't want to go in front of the low back in the day millville where i grew up this was like some straight up mayberry shit dude the fucking judge you would see him it was called happy days lounge you would see him over at happy days you would see his van. everybody knew his van you you can go in there see the motherfucker eating and drinking beer and then going back and fucking hearing cases dude i swear to fucking god and that was the only time I didn't mind going in front of a local fucking judge because he knew me from growing up. So a lot yeah. of times he just, you know, 
get the fuck out of here type shit. Actually, the one time I beat the hell out of this kid. He fucking pressed charges on me, all that fucking bullshit. Had to go down, see him. I uh, got, uh, what's that called? Uh, public service. What is that again? I can't fucking. Oh, community service. Yeah, community, community service. service. And it was winter time. And he's like, you're going to be cleaning my office and all this shit. I'm like, whatever, dude. That's fine. So I go in, dude. Was there for 20 fucking minutes. He made me wipe down his desk and clean his little personal fridge he had in his office. And he's like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to see your face in here again. I see your face in here again. Don't think that uh, it's going to be like what happened with your buddy there. I'll beat your fucking ass. I'm like, go, man. <laughs> okay, dude. No, we good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, he ended up fighting. If you go look it up online, it was uh, the, the Honorable McCarthy. What the fuck was his first name again? Rich. Richard McCarthy. Uh, Millville PA's uh, magistrate. Look it up, dude. He got fucked on with the drink. All kinds of shit, like sexual harassment. He supposedly whipped his cock out in a fucking bar, dude. Like That's how crazy this dude was. <laughs> oh my god yeah you know i'm gonna look and see if i can find something real quick but yeah dude he was fucking crazy uh yeah but now fucking if anything happens in milvo they they combined it all into one township shaler township and everything goes in front of this vonic and that dude is fucking nuts man and that's what i'm gonna have to go see for this shit Yeah, those, those lawyers and judges, they like their booze. Oh, yeah. Did, uh, did you happen to check out our uh, interview we did with... Uh, oh, Demolition Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that guy's great, man. I never, I never listened to Venom when he was in the band. I listened to like the just like their first record because I love that first... Like the first, I think, record is just like... Like that super fast one, and um, it's it's like really like kind of low production. Sounds like a punk rock record, you know. But then uh, it, the the um the clips that you were playing during the interview, man, those guys looked like they were they were fucking rocking it up there. Yeah, dude, they were they. Uh, I actually went back. Somebody had messaged to Facebook asking us uh, if we had the link to that live footage, and. Uh, I sent it to him. Yeah, if you go watch that, man, they, they're they still shredding with the fucking best of them, dude. Well, that was cool. Like, he was talking about, um, like, Megaforce Records. Um, he's like, yeah, and the guy that helped him get on Nuclear Blast used to work for Megaforce, and they were out of New Jersey. So, um, you know, and, and the guy, Eddie Trunk, you know, that the, that heavy metal guy, he used to um, he used to work for, you know, like, uh, Tony Z was the guy's name who owned the label. And and the label started out of like a, it was just like a record. He owned a record store, um, and what I went it's somewhere kind of like down the shore area. Um, uh, I, I forget what, what town it was. It's like Woodbridge or something. But uh, like he's you know he signed Anthrax and then he signed Metallica to their first record. I and I don't know if he signed Venom, but um, that was cool that uh that that demolition man was talking about one of the guys that worked for he's like yeah the guy's from new jersey and i was like oh shit you know i didn't even think of that when he was saying that shit yeah you wouldn't that's probably all fucking nostalgia or familiar to you like i was a little young for the um the like the, the uh like the early megaforce stuff like when I was listening to the Megaforce stuff, the, you know that band King's X? Yeah. Their friends, well, like they were on, like they just got signed to them. And um, they're, they're, they're a really good band, but I just, that guy's voice, I just can't get into. That's the dude, that's the uh, gay black guy, ain't it? Yeah, Doug Pennant. Yeah, that's the dude that Phil and Selmo kissed on the uh, lips before he went out and played that show where he see how and yelled white power. Yeah. It's a gay black man who's like really good friends with Phil and, and and Phil's gonna be a racist kissing a black guy on you know I mean come on yeah because that's one of the big things everybody brought up right if you were backstage and you would have known what he did with so and so so how's he a fucking <laughs> I remember when King's X first came to New York because my buddy was real into him and when like the curtain opened up and they saw like the crowd in New York for him th their eyes just like lit up like like they couldn't believe that like so many people in new york liked them 
There's awesome behind the stage footage when I think it's like fucking late 80s, early 90s with King's X, Phil and Selmo and Rex. They're all just chilling backstage. Bullshit, man. It's fucking awesome. Like it's the I've old you can tell. Yeah, you, you got that old VHS quality to it and shit. And it was cool, like the band room. There's all like graffiti on the walls, and and yeah. and, and the guy Doug Pinnock, he had like that kind of mohawk, like shaved on the sides. Yeah, yep. Phil looks like a kid. Yeah. Phil looks like a little kid, man. Yep. Dude, did you see Vulgar Sway Powers? The 25th anniversary this month, man. There's actually, I'll uh, I'll tag you in it. Uh, yeah, cool. There's a fucking. It's just the vocal tracks. That's it. Just vocals of uh. Fuck. I can't think of the song right now. I always do this when I'm live. I have brain farts. But yeah, it's just the vocal tracks with Phil. You hear no music. It's just, dude, it's, it's fucking bad ass, dude. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear that. I like when they isolate, you know, something from, the, from like the record or whatever or from the track, you know? Yeah. Like I've, heard, I've heard some guitar players like, you know, like let's just say Dime, for example, and they'll isolate just like a rhythm track. And you're like, oh, my God, like I, I never heard that before. You know, you're like, I didn't know they even did that. But then when you hear the song, you can hear that part in it. Yeah, I'm tagging you right now. It's fucking bad ass, dude. That guy, the um, the demolition man was uh, what's his name? Tony Dolan. He's uh, dude, he was mad cool. Cause beer man said, "You oh, you gotta watch it. This guy's like the coolest guy." Oh uh, yeah, dude. Where do you hear fucking part two? I purposely fucking uh. Saved it for the end, man. He gets in depth with like the Bataclan fucking. Oh, that's why you have a whole new Facebook. Yeah, I had to restructure it. I forgot to. Uh, I guess I forgot to hit you up. Yeah, I just sent you a friend request. All right. But uh, yeah, he gets into the shooting up at the Bataclan or whatever that was in France. Wow. Like, the whole like, dude. And I said this in the beginning of the, of the stream that I'm not taking away from anybody else that we've interviewed. They've all been so fucking cool, but dude, and they show love for their fans. But the way this fucking dude talks about the way they try to plan shows and their tours and the way he talks about meeting fans, he's talking about being up for like fucking almost two days straight. And people coming up to him with fucking 10, 15 things to sign. He will never turn it down because, you know, what? for all he knows, this is the last show or the last chance this person will have to meet him. And, dude, like, the, the guy is so fucking cool, man. Like, I, like I, I said, the, me and Josh were talking to each other, like, messaging on Facebook during the whole interview. Like, dude, this guy is so fucking cool. And, dude, the... We talked to him for like an hour and a half almost, and we counted eight questions. We asked him eight questions. Uh, That's how you, in depth this dude got. You know what I liked about it? He seemed to like want to pass on, you know, like the knowledge. And you know, like a lot of guys, like they don't want to, you know, like a, like a guitar player don't want to show you nothing, or a carpenter don't want to show you nothing. This guy seems to want to just say, "Hey, look, this is what we do. We, you can, you know, just be a part of it, and you can do it." And um, he just had so much love, like it just seemed for now, like for the fans and, and, and so much respect for just the guys he's with and everything. Yeah. You can tell he's all about the fucking music, man. Like that's all he wants to fucking do. I, th I think it's in part one where we talked about the fucking festivals and shit and like, I mean, yeah, dude, like I was just blown away with it, man. And, uh, normally editing, I, it gets so fucking I just get bored with it after a while. I was actually loving this one, sitting back and re-listening to it because when you're doing it, you're thinking of more questions to ask. I mean, you're listening to them, but you're also thinking. And me, what always ha is happens all the fucking time, don't answer like three or four of my questions like while we're talking. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Now what do I do? <laughs> so I got to think. And then Josh, he's real fucking good. So he'll, he'll, he'll ask a question I was thinking about, or, you know, like it, 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 it I was just happy to sit back and be like, okay, let's listen. And it was, 
the guy was just so fucking awesome, man. Do you have any other interviews lined up? Uh, we're working on a few. We're, I'm editing Marzies right now. Finally going to have that out. I actually had to go back because remember we talked to him a while ago, but it got all fucked up. So we had to reschedule. I, I, uh, I wanted to rip out because the first time we talked to him, he was actually shredding for us like on the hangout. Wow. So I wanted to rip some of that out of that, that first interview to throw into this one. Cause dude, there's some good shit on there that I don't want going to waste. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean, especially like, because if, if you throw that away, and then you, you can't always recapture what what you already did. You know, it's um, it's it's like you know, some bands will make a great demo, and then okay, try to recreate the demo. You can't, you know. And um, speaking of that, dude, did you see the thing I shared about the Browning? No, I didn't see it. Dude, I, uh, I feel so fucking bad for these dudes. I mean. I don't know if you'll dig them. I'll, I'll say check them out. They're called the Browning. They're a heavy metal band, but they throw in like this uh, almost like rave type music, but they're heavy. It's like, I don't even know how to describe them. So a lot of people don't like them because of the fucking, the, the weird raver beats they'll throw in there, but I, I think they're cool. But anyway, they were in Germany and he, uh, their van got completely robbed. They even took their fucking clothes, dude. Everything, and he only has he has four hard drives that have all their shit on. There's no more backups. They're all fucking stolen. He, they had to fucking pack up, cancel the tour, and come back. And now they have to re fucking write all their shit, dude. Oh man. Their whole career just got stolen out of that fucking van, dude. Everything. They, they got to set up like a, a Kickstarter or GoFundMe. They did a GoFundMe trying to raise 10 k I'm going to go check that out and see where they got with it. But, uh, dude, he said even their fucking clothes were stolen, dude. And uh, it was by a, a gypsy camp. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the fucking police had a they looked at the surveillance footage and they know exactly what camp it is but he said that the police wouldn't fucking he said they asked him like hey can we can you tell us where it's at or can you go there and the cop said no yeah they're they're, they're probably like you know something something's going on you know either they're they're paid off or like it's just like the cops are scared of them you know because you know, those gypsy camps, they stick t tight, you know? It reminds me of the movie Snatch when I hear about gypsy camps. <laughs> you ever see the movie Snatch with Brad Pitt? I, you know, I don't, I didn't see that one. I saw another one where the, it's called, like, Lock, like stock, the guy and gets, barrels? No, it was about, like, this guy and, like, some, some gypsy lady put a curse on him. He either got really fat or really skinny. I, I forget what it was. Nah, I never seen that one. Dude, I they, heard that they were only trying to raise five grand, but they ended up raising ten thousand seventy dollars. Oh, good, good. Here, tell me if you're able to hear this. What's up? This is Johnny from the Browning, and here with some. Are you able to hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. We were full on robbed in Milan on our tour with allegedly and blessing a curse. People just broke into our van took literally everything any of us own at all. The clothes we're wearing are the only things we have. Also, we've lost a lot of things that we basically used to live, like Cody and I work 100% off our laptops, and that was all taken. Any file that Browning has ever created was taken. Basically, we have to cancel the tour and try to rebuild um, the, the work we've been working on and everything that we've done up to this point on the laptops and the hard drives and um everything is where we have our backups of our live files for our show and so for the browning to be able to play we would need one of those like six things that was stolen but all six of them were taken um no one else on the planet besides me and cody have these files and that's why we have to cancel because there's literally not a way or the Browning to play without one of those six things that were taken. Right now we're on our way home uh, to the States. 
and we're going to start this rebuilding process of um, getting work computers replaced and hard drives and basically everything that we use to live and also going to have to work really hard to completely remake Browning songs uh, so that we can play our tour coming up in the States next month. We've set up a GoFundMe. Uh, it'll be linked underneath this video. Um, and we appreciate anyone that's willing to help us. The money for the GoFundMe is just going to help us get our essentials so we can start working again. Um, but also, everyone lost every bit of clothes we own. We live out of our luggage bags, and every person's luggage was taken. The money's going to go to getting people's clothes back, getting computers so we can work and start making a living again. And also to, um, so I can remake rounding songs so we can continue to tour. So anyone that wants to contribute, I, we appreciate it like insane. Once I get home, uh, I'll do a bigger description of what happened. You can also read on the GoFundMe page what happened and you can see it. So thanks for even watching and we'll talk sometime soon. Ain't that a fucking bummer, man? Man, I mean... I can't think of anything worse, bro. I, 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 you're in another country. Oh shit, am I echoing? No, you're good. Oh. Um, in in another country, all your shit's gone. Like, uh, did they even have like money to get home? Did somebody they have to borrow money? Like, that's you know. I mean, I've heard of bands getting robbed, you know, on tour in the states. Like their trailer will get broken into, and they'll steal other shit, which really sucks. But um, that's just you, that you can replace that stuff with insurance and everything. But um, you know, when you have like just the, like yeah, you can replace the computers, but the stuff on the computers, like well, you like the, like the you know all their music. Yeah, um, dude, that that, break my heart. That yeah, man. Oh god! And if you go to their their, I'm gonna actually put the link in the in the uh, the description. But if you go to their their uh, GoFundMe, uh, he has the whole story like typed out. <clears throat> That's where it talks about it being at a gypsy camp and uh, the cops not going there, and uh, pretty much the whole story of what happened. And like you said, I don't know. I'm assuming. Uh, I don't think they're on a label. I'm not sure. I don't know how the fuck they got back home. It actually in the the description. It says, luckily, they didn't touch their passports. Oh, well, they, at least they gave them that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that was fucking rough, bro. No, and it was in Milan, Italy. That sucks. They put on a really good fucking live show. I seen them in this really tiny fucking hole in the wall called uh the smiling moose here in pittsburgh and uh i went up it was right before they came on i just bought I, I think i bought like three stickers and uh the singer was standing over in the corner and i didn't even notice him but he seen that i bought merch and he came over to bullshit and signed an autograph and thanked me like he was super fucking cool yeah that's real cool man yeah, here, I don't know how good you're going to be able to hear this, but I'll, I'll give you a quick sample of them real quick. Fuck you. Like, I, this is probably my favorite song by them. It's, uh, like, I, I don't know how to describe their sound. Oh, uh, JR went and looked at him. He says, sounds good. They're, they're good, man. <laughs> JR likes the good stuff. Uh, JR likes the good stuff. <laughs> this song's called Bloodlust. Oh, there it is. The video is pretty fucking cool for this shit, too. Earache Records. Okay. I guess that's who they're under. Now watch. I'm going to get a copyright hit on me. <laughs> Can you feel something? Ah, oh, come on. Without touching it. Sorry to do this to you. Damn, it's got over 2 million views. Can you hear it?
This is where it gets brutal. <laughs> Yeah, I just lost it right there. I'll check them out after, um, like later on. Yeah, it's because it just hit hard. You could hear it just like, <laughs> but yeah, it just kind of cut yeah. out. Yeah, that was right at the bass log. That's probably why, because they use them fucking bass logs. Or it's like, boom. Well, that, that's cool. It's like a modern industrial metal, but it's better like that in heavy industrial. You can use more like that, um, you know, like the, uh, with the, that like, rave thing. Of, Party music. Like, yeah, like the red. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it has that. Yeah, they're, they're walking that industrial line with rave music. <laughs> yeah, it's like modern kind of like it's just industrial with like more. I'm not saying like you know it's the same thing, but it just kind of reminds me of that. You know, like that because I remember like when you first started hearing like the industrial bands it was like, whoa, this is pretty cool, man. Like when you first started hearing Ministry and Nine Inch Nails and Skinny Puppy. Ministry for sure, dude. I remember the first time hearing them. I was like, "What the fuck? This is badass!" And then like White Zombie. I saw Ministry live a couple times, man. They were intense. I never got to see them live, dude. I can't think of the fucking band name right now. Oh, that's gonna fucking was it Full Metal Jacket or Full Devil Jacket? Do you remember them? Uh, no. I don't. I, were they like a nineties nineties band or? Yeah, they were like in the mid '90s. I remember the song is called "A Green Box to Put My Frankenstein Head In." <laughs> that sounds like a good one. <laughs> yeah, they were like a fucking ministry, like industrial type band. I remember seeing the music video. I, I think I was in like fifth or sixth grade, and I was like, "These dudes are fucking bad ass." <laughs> it was awesome, man. Because I remember a lot of like the metal guys, they they didn't like the industrial at first. They're like, oh man, that's like dance music or something. But then it started getting real intense, and you couldn't deny it. Like, like, like the land of rape and honey when that came out, people were just like, oh man, like Ministry just killed it right here. And then it just got like sicker and sicker. See, the first time like I like I heard Ministry, but White Zombie was like the. Yeah, they were more like mainstream, like more known, we'll say. Not mainstream, but more known. Yeah. I just remember being blown away with the uh, shit. It was that movie soundtrack. I can't think of the fucking name of it right now. That was the first time I heard them. And uh, I was like, wow, this is pretty fucking cool. So I went and got that Astro Creep album. It was, that was like... That was right, because then there was, like, Prodigy. Like, that was my era. You remember Prodigy? Yeah, I like some of their stuff. Yeah, that see, that was, like, that was my pre-metal phase, like, right as I was leaning that way, like. And then, uh, like I said, my buddy had showed me Pantera, and that was. <laughs> that was it. It was like, yeah. this is it. <laughs> this is my <laughs> shit. I remember going home and literally ripping my corn posters off the wall and all, <laughs> like. <laughs> Fuck you! Because <laughs> well, yeah, you, know, like, you could never put Pantera in that like new metal category that they were calling Corn and all those because Corn had those like funny little I guess they had a DJ with them or something sometimes. Yeah, and, they um, had they're the guy that would play the samples and shit. And then you had like that Limp Biscuit, and you had uh -huh. like, and they all kind of had like DJs. But then you know you had you know like Pantera, which was like still that traditional. But new fucking, you know, they were a new new band. I mean, not new, but I mean, like, they were just, like, getting known and just, just still, like, old school but modern, you know? Like, yeah. they were, like, a throwback, a throwback metal band, but were, in, in, were modern and still, like, leading the way. Yep. See, when a lot of people, they, they uh, I've read this a lot, and it was, uh, they blame Pantera for the new metal i've read that so much because of the groove and all that there there's actually i forget the facebook page there's a couple of them that are like all about fucking bashing pantera and if you go on there and read it that's like everybody's big boner towards them is oh they're the reason we got fucking new metal and fucking blah 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 like <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs> that's that's utter bullshit because you want to hear you want to hear the original groove metal put on fucking Black Sabbath's first record. That's some groove metal right there. 
Dude, <laughs> riffs. Oh my god, dude. They're they're just beautiful. Like them. And then and then like the bass lines and 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 just the way the bass and and the drums would get together. I mean, you know. And then like people still call Zeppelin like, oh, they're like the godfathers of heavy metal. Well, I'm not a big Zeppelin fan, but those dudes groove like a motherfucker. You know? Oh, dude, dazed and confused them that fucking riff. Stoner metal. <laughs> I don't know. You can't. I don't think you can blame Pantera for that. Like you know, it was, it was more like, um, you know, when, when you had like the hip hop coming out, and then you had, like the metal bands. Like you know, if you really want to go back to it, I can name some New York bands that nobody ever heard of that were like groove metal, like in like the late '80s. You know, like Twenty Four Seven Spies. You know, which were like kind of like a hip hop group, but they were metal and. Um, it's just like uh, you can't blame Pantera for that. The only thing you can blame Pantera for is being super awesome. Fucking right, man. You can't help what you know inspires people to fucking play, dude. There's there's not even a fucking cunt hair of fucking new metal in Pantera. And it, you know, maybe maybe some of those guys listen to Pantera, but they, you know, I don't hear Pantera influence in Corn. You know, I Corn just sounds like you know, kind of. That, like that DJ, like early two thousands, you know, and Pantera. I heard of Pantera before that, so. Yeah. See, I what year was that? I want to say it was ninety seven when I when I was shown Pantera. Because I remember uh, we had um, a station. It was eighty nine five. It was a college station. F. Uh, FMU was um, Seton Hall Pirate Radio, and they they played like you know metal music. And I remember that's the first time I heard Pantera, and I heard Phil. I was like, "Wow, man! Like this is this is really good." Because it reminded me like of a hardcore singer in like a metal band, and I was like, "This is what Anthrax should have been," you know, like <laughs> that fruity singer. That. See, dude, what's weird is the song that got me into Pantera. You would was floods which you know it's heavy but it isn't their heaviest by any means that it was like i think just the right way to catch my attention because it was like it, dude the solo in there is ranked one of the best solos of all fucking time in a metal band he actually has two solos in there but i just remember being blown away like this is fucking amazing and my buddy's like take this home and you fucking listen to it and i took the album home dude and it was the great southern trend kill and if you play the Great Southern Trend Kill the first second, you're punched in the fucking face, dude. And it, it's just an amazing album. And but, I was hooked from there on out. <laughs> well, that's what I love when a band does. Like when you first hear them, they just kick your teeth in, you know, like like you know, like when Pan's Terror hits the stage, they're kicking you in the teeth, you know? And and that's what I love about a band like them. Oh yeah, dude. I remember, dude, the first time I seen them, it was Ozfest 2000, dude. I was 14 or 15, dude. No bullshit. People can take this sound bite out. I damn near cried when they <laughs> fucking came out, dude. I'm not even going to lie to you, dude. When Phil fucking came walking out, I just remember standing there like, oh, my God, this is really about to happen. And he's like, <laughs> I'll never forget it. He's like, good God, it's Pantera. And they kicked in this fucking uh, – goddamn electric and i'm like oh my god <laughs> dude it was so fucking awesome and then when they fucking played this love i almost cried right fucking there that's, like, that's the perfect age right there like to get hit with that you know and it just changes you after that yeah dude, I, gotta... <laughs> I was just so fucking floored that i was getting to see them in person you know what i'm saying like holy shit this is really happening right now was that your first concert no, actually, I went to the Ozfest '99 the year before, and um, I, I went with my parents. Took me, dude. And they didn't want to do the whole Ozfest, so we got there when Rob Zombie was playing, and then Sabbath. So I only got to see two bands, but I mean, it was still fucking Sabbath, dude. So it was awesome, but you know, that was you know I was 13, so I appreciated Sabbath, but it was still my parents' music to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was it's still like, no, old, yeah. Yeah, but that, like, I consider OzFest 2000 my first real concert experience because I went with 
three of my friends, dude. And it was just, there was so many good bands at that one, but all day long, that's all I can fucking, oh, come on, man, come on. I just want to see Pantera. Please let me see Pantera. And, oh, dude, I will never forget that fucking, that feeling ever, dude. Like, just, even my buddies, because, I, yeah, I was 14 because my three friends, dude, they were like 16, 17, 18. So I was the young buck. And I just remember they kept fucking with me, like pushing my head, like, because they could see that I'm standing there like, oh, God, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they, they knew, like, look at him, dude. He's fucking loving shit right now. <laughs> it was awesome, dude. Oh, fuck. I got to run my little, my little dog out for a walk here. Um all right. Jump back on if you're still going, bro. Actually, dude, I was going to go ahead and jump off here in a couple minutes anyway because I'm past the hour. But, dude, thanks for fucking coming on, man. And then I didn't get to talk to you, but I appreciate you coming on Monday, dude. I was pumped to see you were the one that came on. Cool, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. Fuck yeah, dude. Like I said, man, you, you always have a fucking invite. So you want to come on some Monday, shoot a message, and psh, you're on. All right, man. When, one of these days we'll talk about – uh. You know, I don't know. Whatever we talk about. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll, next time, I, I'm going to do a hangout. I'll fucking reach out to you first, and we'll set something up. All right, bro. Have a good night. All right, you too, man. Appreciate Later. it, buddy.